Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Aronson, and I have clinical as well as personal experience with TSC. That's because not only am I a dermatologist who manages patients with TSC, I also have TSC myself. Now, I'd like to share my insights with you. Sometimes it's quite difficult to distinguish skin manifestations of TSC with other skin lesions that aren't associated with the disease. For example, very mild cases of adenoma sebaceum, also called facial angiofibroma, may be impossible to differentiate from mild acne to the untrained eye. There's also a rare syndrome called multiple endocrine neoplasm type 1 where the lesions on the face are actually adenoma sebaceum when observed under the microscope. In this case, the adenoma sebaceum is already related to endocrine tumors, so it's hard to determine a connection to TSC. Another example is distinguishing vitiligo and TSC-related hypomelanotic macules due to their similar lack of color. Vitiligo is a progressive skin disorder marked by sharply circumscribed white spots of skin. Hypomelanotic macules are white skin lesions that may present in different shapes on the posterior trunk, extremities, head, or neck. So that's why we look to the size, shape, and number of these lesions for insight. In my view, I'm pretty sure that if one did a study, there would be zero color in vitiligo, whereas the pigment in the white macula is just not highly expressed. Because these lesions cannot easily be detected without a Woods lamp, it may be very difficult to tell them apart. The Woods lamp, which is found in most dermatologists' offices, produces ultraviolet radiation to detect various skin lesions. There's a common non-cancerous growth called fibrous papule of the face. Under the microscope, it's indistinguishable from an adenoma sebaceum lesion of TSC. Specifically, fibrous papules on the nose are generally 1 to 5 millimeters, shiny, skin-colored, dome-shaped papules. Adenoma sebaceum are discrete, firm, reddish papules that frequently develop in the folds between the nose and upper lip. Because a lot of facial lesions associated with TSC can be confused with skin manifestations and other syndromes, a dermatologist may want to take a biopsy. In some cases, a patient may be given a complete exam and will be sent for more testing by the specialist who has that specific area of expertise, such as a pediatric neurologist or a geneticist.